What is up guys this is Tiro back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest pixel experience from of this device. Now if I go into this Android version section you can see this is the 5th June 2020 build of pixel experience plus ROM and this is based on Android 10 of course and the security patch if you notice this is latest June 5th 2020 security patch. Here we have the kernel version as Kumako plus kernel. This is the stock kernel over here. To flash this ROM, I had to format storage even though I was on a custom ROM like Pixis OS. So from that ROM, while I flashed this latest build of Pixel Experience ROM, it rebooted me back to the recovery. So it was a weird situation, but I'm just saying that if your storage is encrypted and your Orange Fox recovery asks for password, even then you might have to format storage. So here, let me show you what did I do afterwards. So as you can see, I have used this latest Orange Fox recovery. The version is R10.1 underscore three. This is the latest version of the Orange Fox recovery I have installed over here. And I'll recommend you guys using this particular recovery. Once you have downloaded the ROM file and the formats, the latest formats on your PC, just make sure to format data in case if you do not have a backup, make sure you have a backup from your internal storage to the PC. And now let me show you, I went to menu, then this manage partition, selected data and tap right, then format data type yes. And I hit enter, so it did format the data. And afterwards I moved all the files. So after you have formatted the data, make sure you reboot your recovery once. And once you did reboot your recovery, go to the settings and then OTA and from here, make sure you have this disable force encryption option enabled. This particular option, you have to enable it. And if you enable it, you will have your storage decrypted. It won't ask for password anymore. Now, once I selected this, I flashed this latest firmware, which is the 20.6.4. I did not have any issue while flashing the firmware or afterwards as of right now. But if you are worried about flashing a little bit lower firmware, you can go with those. I mean, a little bit older firmware. And after flashing the firmware, I flashed the Pixel Experience ROM, the latest ROM, which is the 5th June 2020 build, and I just straight up rebooted. And of course, you do not need any GApps over here because the ROM already includes the GApps. And I have also flashed the ANX camera later on. This is the version 184. So now let me just reboot the system and show you the UI. So first, let me show you the stock launcher. Of course, this is a Pixel launcher. And to the left of this launcher, we have the Google's Discover page. Swiping down on the home screen gets you to the notification or the quick settings panel. You can add more toggles from here if you'd like. These are the toggles you get. Let me add some more. We also have a screen recorder over here, but I do not see the FPS info option over here. So that's a bit weird. So you can disable heads up from this quick settings panel. And also you can enable dark theme if you'd like to, as you can see, dark theme works flawlessly, no issues. And here you can like record screen. Of course, now I'll allow it. Okay, so you cannot really change much things over here, I guess. If I tap and hold on the screen recorder, you can only see this show tabs option. So there is no option to change frame rates or bitrate or anything like that. Or even you cannot switch to the internal audio or the microphone audio. I think by default, the screen recorder records the system audio. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer. I have already disabled the suggestions over here and like scrolling through the app drawer and stuff is pretty smooth, no issues that I could find. The stock camera is a bit disappointing to me because this is the Snapdragon camera present by default. And once I tapped the settings icon over here, as you see, the camera just froze. So yeah, this bug is there. As you can see right now, the camera has been froze. And if I like switch to the front camera now and then switch to the back camera again, then only it will work as you can see. So yeah, pretty disappointing stock camera here, but I have already flashed this ANX camera version 184. This has been working fine pretty much. Switching between stuff is a little bit slower, I guess, as you can see. Inside the Pro Mode, the 48 megapixel option is there, but it actually does not work, I guess. In the video mode, we have the option to shoot up to 4K 30 FPS, as you can see here. But as soon as you switch to the portrait mode, the camera crashes. So you gotta keep that in mind. So except for portrait mode, the ANX camera is working fine actually. And I have already installed this Gcam over here. And if you do not have a Gcam, I'll link it below. Like I have installed it separately, of course. And with this Gcam, everything should be working fine. Night set and stuff should work pretty fine, no issues. And even with video mode and stuff, it should work. As you can see right now, it's working. You can change the frame rate up to like 60 FPS over here 
as you can see right now it's pretty fast so yeah the gcam is working totally fine here home screen widgets are working fine so you should not worry about it and as you can see the data info shows as level one over here so you should not worry much about the like netflix or amazon prime videos working on 1080p it should work and if you're worried about banking apps yes the banking apps are working totally fine you should not worry about it either as you can see it passes the safety net test Google Pay and stuff should be like working right out of the box. You don't even need Magisk. And with this LED RGB remote app, I have tested the IR Blaster present on the device and that is working totally fine. Now inside settings first, let me go to the battery settings here. We have the screen on time. Then we have the last full charge and stuff. Battery saver option is there. Then if you tap over here, it doesn't do anything. You have to tap these three buttons, then go to battery usage to see the full usage. In terms of battery life, I would say you can get about six plus hours of screen on time easily on this ROM and 18 watt fast charging works flawlessly over here. Inside display settings, we have the dark theme and stuff and you can schedule the dark theme if you want to. Then we have the color calibration mode, full RGB control is there and adaptive or auto brightness is there in case if you want that. And in terms of the stock wallpapers over here, we have these live wallpapers by default. You can download these and these are the like preloaded ones. Let me go back. We also have this living universe section. You can also install the MIUI 12 live wallpapers. If you want that, here is a card for you. Now, if you want to change the accent colors over here, by default, it is blue as you can see. And if you want to set a custom accent color, then you can like click on this custom, then select your stuff. And from this eight accent color icons, you can choose whatever you want like this. Even there is a black one, looks pretty cool. And there is this pink kind of color. And these eight colors are like all you get over here. There is no red option or something. So yeah, the customizations are pretty limited over here on this ROM. But thankfully, there is the dark theme. You can use that. Then if you scroll down, we have the display size, notch behavior changing option, full screen apps. You can set particular apps to full screen over here. Then inside lock screen display, we have some like settings of the lock screen. It will wake the device and show you the notification whenever there is a new notification. Those kind of things are there. Double tap to sleep is there on the status bar, but I don't know why there is no double tap to wake option. I cannot remember, but I think it was there earlier. Like if I double tap on the status bar, as you can see, the phone goes to sleep. But as you can see, even if I double tap over here, it does not wake up the screen. Now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed here. Let me tap and as you can see it unlocked. Let's do it again. Let me try with the right hand's index finger. So as you can see, the finger scan speed is actually pretty fast. Wake up on plug you can disable then prevent accidental waking up is there. Let me go back and inside sound settings if you scroll down, there is no like me audio direct that I cannot find over here. That option is simply not present. Vibrate to indicate call status is there. Touch vibration, screenshot sound, etc. You can disable from here. Then we have the live caption mode. Vibrate for calls and stuff is there. And here, as you can see, this is how the volume panel looks like. Pretty much stock Android-ish volume panel. And you can expand it just like this. Now, let me scroll down. We also have the face unlock feature over here. And by the way, this Google Play system update was showing that like it needs an update. It was showing red. So I just tapped on the system update and it did download the update. Then after it rebooted, it installed automatically. I did not need to do anything. Now, let me quickly set up the face unlock. So setting up face unlock is done. Now I'll just double tap to sleep, tap the power button. And as you can see, it unlocks. Now let me try it again. I don't have to swipe up over here. It just goes straight into the home screen. As you can see, it goes straight into the home screen. There is also an option to keep the phone in the lock screen. Let me show you inside display settings. And if you go into this lock screen display here, as you can see, there is this keep lock screen option. If you disable that and if I now try with the face unlock and then shows the unlock icon over here. Now, if I swipe up, then only it will unlock. So this option is there. Now talking about customizations on this Pixel Plus ROM, everything is inside the system panel and you should not expect too much customizations, but there are some. Inside gestures, we have the system navigation gesture. This is the stock Android kind of gesture, like full screen gesture. And in the settings, we have this hide the navigation pill bar, but there is no option to increase the size of this pill bar. 
two and three button navigation is there too. Then we have the swipe to take screenshot. So if you take a screenshot, let me show you. This is the Asus kind of screenshot gesture. You can take a long screenshot. You can edit them and share or delete them from here. To the buttons here, we have the system navigation gestures again. Then we have the edge long swipe action. You can like keep it on turn off screen. So if I swipe like this, as you can see edge to edge swiping, this will trigger the action. Whatever you can like say it over here, like split screen or something. Let me try it. As you can see, it is pretty helpful, I would say. Now, let me go into the power menu here. You do not see the advanced reboot, but you have to go to the developer options to enable that. I'll show you that later on. Long press for torch is there. This feature works flawlessly, no issues. Then we have the volume button controls. Now, let me go back to the status bar. Here we have the network traffic indicator. I'm not using this. I'm using a separate app for that, but this should work fine. Inside system icons, we have headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. Vaulty and stuff should be working fine. You should not worry about it. In the clock position, you can change it to left or right. I have set it to left and then AM PM style is there. You can choose that. Battery status style is there. You can choose that to icon portrait, circle, etc. Then battery percentage, you can choose it to next to the icon or inside the icon. Then brightness lighter option is there. As you can see, you have the show when expanded and stuff, never show, etc. And auto brightness and this brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar is there. So this is a really helpful feature and I use it on a daily basis, as you can see. I just swipe like this on the status bar and it adjusts the brightness. This feature works flawlessly, no issues. And we have the quick pull down, then the visibility settings and column and row number customization is there. And we have the style animation for the quick toggles. As you can see, flip or rotate, you can choose that. Now let me go back. We also have the developer option over here. And there is also a system update section. Whenever there is an update, you can check for updates from here. So that's pretty cool. Let me go back. And to enable the developer options, you just go to the about phone and from here tap on this build number seven times. You should not tap on this build number in the like Android version. You just go to the about phone and tap on this particular build number inside about phone. Now let me go back inside the system again inside developer options. I have enabled this advanced restart over here and that is the reason why in the power menu I have the directly rebooting to recovery and fast boot option. And of course, from this developer option, you can set this default USB to file transfer. This is pretty convenient feature, I would say. And the default keyboard over here is Gboard, so you should not worry about your privacy, I guess. In terms of daily driving performance, the ROM should be pretty good. And here are the Android and Geekbench score of this ROM. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tiro from KDN Tech signing off for today, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.